in your Bibles this morning to Ephesians chapter 4. So as I mentioned last week, we have been in this series. Now this is our third week in the Bridge series. The Bridge series is simply that. It is, put the graphic up there, yeah, the Bridges series is simply that. It is a journey about what bridges look like. What are bridges in our lives? You know, it's, it's interesting when you, you, you consider how many bridges you might cross in a day. Probably most of the people in here, or many of the people, I'll say this, in here this morning, crossed a bridge just to get here this morning. You came over the bridge over here over Lake Monroe, and you had to start on one side to get over that lake, you had to drive over that bridge. You didn't take, I don't know of anybody that took a boat to get here this morning, but you went over that bridge to get here today. That bridge served as a transition point. It provided you a pathway to be able to get from where you were to where you wanted to be. That's the nature of bridges. There's nothing uh, in and of itself that is um, deep, uh, about a bridge other than the fact that it gets us from here to wherever there is. Now, what the bridge represents, though, can be very deep. And we are talking about five bridges in this series. Today is the third bridge, but we're discussing and learning about five bridges. They're not the only bridges in Scripture, but five bridges that represent a moment of opportunity for anyone who has eyes to see, and ears to hear. And I believe that's you today. Today we're going to be talking about the bridge of until. Everybody say bridge of until. Bridge. So back in February 2020, so a little over, almost two years ago, I preached this message of until, the word until, it's a whole series, preached about until. And then when I was preparing this series, as Holy Spirit was giving me this series, he asked me or instructed me to include two subjects that I had preached on before. One of them was the bridge of offense. We started with that. We're probably going to go back to that again at the end of uh, the series. And then also this is the second one, the bridge of until. And the reason I believe he wanted me to include that is because of the significance of these particular words. Offense, those two things that I've talked about before, one, offense keeps people from entering into their purpose because they get all tangled up in a knot over something somebody said or did that they didn't agree with or thought was out of place or out of time. Somehow it affected us personally and deeply in such a way that it prevented us from being able to move on. There are hopefully not present in this room, but likely there's people, there are people still present under the sound of my voice, I'll say it that way in case you're watching online, there are people under the sound of my voice that are still dealing with some offense from the past. And that offense has become for you an obstacle preventing you from being able to get to the deeper places that the Father wants to take you. In, in your mind, you justify the offense. In your mind, you can justify it and you can say, well, I have a right to be mad at this person. I have a right to hold this against this person because they did this or they did that. And it becomes real easy to remember what was done against us. What we need to do is consider what happens if we get beyond remembering what was done against us and get to the place where we focus on what the Father will do when we get over that offense. If we can get to that place, that's the bridge that He can begin to grow us and change us. Some people, in fact, are wondering, even now, under my voice, why am I feeling like I'm still in the same spiritual position today that I was in five years ago? Well, I would encourage you to go back and ask yourself, were you offended by something in the church five years ago, and you've never gotten over the offense, and today you're stuck in that place, and the Father won't let you go further until you get past that offense, because we cannot take offense into the kingdom. That was week one. So today, we're going into the bridge of until. The bridge of until is exactly that. It was a word Holy Spirit put in me back in February 2020 that he really began to show me uh, in a season of shift in this building. Many of you were here. Some of you are newer, so you're not going to be familiar with this. But up until that time, there were things that we did in this house, this ministry, that were typical, traditional, whatever you might want to call it. And I'll just use one of them. One of them was the use of titles. So whether you were a pastor, prophet, apostle, teacher, evangelist, whatever it might be, we were all about the titles because we felt like the titles were right. It was only right. I mean, after all, the Father put those in Ephesians. He put those in Scripture, and he instructed us to use those. And it's really easy 
for any of us, no matter who we are, it's really easy for us to get caught up in whatever occurs on the front side of a promise, but to be blind to the back side of the promise. Is this making any say, well, in a minute. So we were using the titles, and, and I had a title, and, and Holy Spirit, actually for years prior to that, those who were part of this knew that there was a conflict in me for a long time about the titles. There was conflict, and, and I was trying to work through that conflict. I didn't want to do something quickly just because it was a feeling. I wanted to make sure it was Holy Spirit, and the conflict never left until I said, I'm not going to do titles anymore. I'm, I'm just, I want to be Steve. If, if you're okay with, I don't even know if I ask if you're okay. I just said, I want to be Steve. I want, call me Steve, and, and I, I'm going to call you by whatever your name is, and, and I just want to be me because I realized that I felt like, and Holy Spirit was making me aware of a point that needed to be made, certainly for me, and that was if Christ himself did not use titles, he said, who do men say that I am? This one says that, this one says that. Who do you say that I am? You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. He didn't use titles. When they were standing at the well with a Samaritan woman, do you think that the disciples addressed him as Christ, the Son of the living God? They addressed him as what would have been Greek, Jesus. Or Hebrew, Yeshua. That's how they would have addressed him. By his name. The title was irrelevant. What was important was the anointing that he walked in. We aren't anointed because we have titles. We're anointed because we're called. So we came through that season and we removed the titles. And this was a moment, among other things, of until. And I want to jump into that today. And I want to start with this. And if you will follow along in your uh, Holy Bible app, go to events and you find the Rock of Central Florida. There's notes there. You can take notes. And you can save this for later personal study, and I encourage you to do that. Again, the Holy Bible app, follow along there. Until we accept what God has prepared ahead of where we are, we are destined to live in hope for what will never come. I want to say it again. I'm going to say it a little slower. Until we accept what God has prepared ahead for us, ahead of where we are, We are destined to live in hope for what will never come. Scripture teaches us that hope deferred makes the heart sick. What that means is hope that is unrealized makes a man or woman weary. Makes them begin to question, is there something past this point for me? Hope is good, though. Hope is right. Hope is of God. He wants us to see, and He wants us to witness, and He wants us to have a hope for things to come. We know this numerous times throughout Scripture. You're going to find where He points us to hoping for this, lay hold of this. There's hope. Hope is a good thing. When hope becomes bad is when it's always unrealized. It's never his intention that hope is something that we see. I hope for this, but it's so far down the road, it's just never going to happen. That isn't God's intention for you. His hope for you is that you begin on side A and you end up on side B. So what is the bridge? Let's jump into this thing this morning. So the bridge is this, and there's always, in fact, say this, say there is always, always. say it again with a little bit more conviction, there is always... A bridge. a bridge. Always a bridge. Always a bridge. I mean, you could make this, you could, you could winnow this thing down into the simplest of forms, and you could say this morning there was a bridge. You, your alarm went off. You had to decide. <laughs> On this side of the alarm, you had to decide, do I turn it off and get up, or do I turn it off and lay still? Amen. You had to decide. You crossed a bridge. That's winnowing it down into the simplest of form. But there is always a bridge, and there is a specific bridge I want to talk about today of significance for you and me, and I want to address Two questions and then a final statement, and this is what it is. Can we accept Yahweh's next for us? What do we pay attention to? And crossing the bridge of until, listen to this, this, we're going to get to this last. Crossing the bridge of until is a walk, not a run. It is a walk, not a run. So let's jump in this morning. Can we accept 
Yahweh's next. I shared this back, um, this story I'm about to share, I shared this back when I originally ministered or shared this, taught this, this message about until, but I want to share it again today. So my wife and I have two labs. We have two uh, yellow labs. One's actually white, one's more yellow, but we have two yellow labs uh, by description. And when both of them are almost the same age. One is a year older than the other. But in our home that we sold this year, uh, we had a pool in that home. And, and one of our labs, Oakley, is the older lab. And bec- if the door opened to the pool, Oakley quickly jumped in. See, labs are born to be water dogs. They are born to love the water. They are born to hunt. They are born to retrieve. And they love that. And when they get around water, they just naturally want to get in. They're born to swim. They're supposed to swim. But because we have these two labs, Oakley, we would open the door. He would jump in. We would have to put a barrier around the pool because we would always be drying him off. Then we got another little lab. And this is Bella. And Bella thinks that she's human. And so Bella... She has to decide what she wants to be a part of. She's sweet, she's precious, she's all of those things. But while Oakley would jump into the water, he's supposed to swim, and he did what he was supposed to do. uh, Bella, when she would go outside, she would walk around the pool and she would look at it. In fact, one day I just picked her up, she was little, and I picked her up, and in the little shallow, there's a little shallow spot that's about eight inches deep in the pool, and I just picked her up and I sat her down in that water thinking, you're a lab. You're supposed to love water. This is going to be fantastic. And I sat her down or put her feet into that water and like a rabbit, man, she just, she's she's trying to figure out how do I get out of this water? Well, one of those labs swam because he wants to, not because he's supposed to. There was something in him. He doesn't know. Oakley didn't know. Man, I'm supposed to swim, so I'm going to have to get into the water. This is my job. He swam because he wanted to, not because he was supposed to. In time, we got Bella to swim because she was supposed to, not because she wanted to. It was law for her in the beginning to get her to swim around that pool. And it begins in, the sim- in a similar way for us in our life. There are times, let me just back up. Let me say this. Every single one of you in this room are supposed to finish the purpose of God for you. Every single person under the sound of my voice today, you are supposed to, your purpose is to fulfill the mission that God put in your heart the day he breathed into your life, into the dirt you were formed from. You're supposed to. Like these labs, one was giddy and jumped on in and it took nothing. In fact, when he first got into the pool, he couldn't even swim and he started sinking. And I had to save him because he didn't know how to swim. The other one, it took forever. Like them, for you and me, what might begin as law will eventually become grace. It will eventually become spirit. So what can we accept Yahweh's next? Bella There was a point for her, more for us, but we're going to say it was her. There was a point for her she had to accept, what's next? I don't like the water. I don't want to be put into the water, but what is next? I'm going to have to accept that I'm a lab, born with purpose. This is my purpose. I'm going to jump into this thing, and I'm going to overcome. And when she did that, when she finally did it on her own, you cannot keep her out of the water. In fact, she she was jumping on the other dog all the time. This is what the Father's looking for in you and me. He's looking for a people that says, I want to get past where I am to get to the other place, and it's a bridge. Let's jump in. Ephesians 4.11 says this, 4.11 and 15. Follow along. It says, and he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building up the body of Christ until, everybody say until, <laughs> until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ. Let me read 11 and 12 and 13 one more time. He gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building up the body of Christ until 
This is the journey. Let's talk about this first journey. Can we accept Yahweh's next? Can we accept God's next? On one side of the bridge, there stands a people who are immature, who are learning, who have a passion to know the things of God. There's a stands of people who need a lot of laws, who need someone to tell them every single day exactly what they need to do in order to achieve the purpose of God or work through the purpose of God on one side of the bridge. On the other side of the bridge is the fullness, its maturity, its maturity, its growth. But the journey between those two sides takes a while. So in order to get from the side where there's immaturity in this scripture, in Ephesians 4.11, what he did was he, he provided apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to equip the body, to equip the saints, to grow them, to educate them, to teach them, to help them, to lay hold of truth. So what every single one of us have to do is come to the place, and this is where it's hard, the untils in our life, it was very difficult for me because I was so fixated and my understanding was fully that every church should be a five-fold ministry church. In my world, if you weren't a five-fold ministry church, you were missing out on something. That was my world. I'm being honest. That was my world. But as Holy Spirit began to direct me to this word until, and I, began to, and I started here, he started me there. I begin to realize, wait a minute. If for the rest of my life, I'm going to require someone to hold my hand and walk me along, do I want to breathe my last breath still requiring someone to hold my hand and walk me along? And Holy Spirit showed me, Steve, what you're doing is you are not helping people. You are hindering them. If you want to help them, recognize when they get to a place of maturity and say, okay, now it's time to move into this next phase. Let's get on the bridge. The problem was that for so long, I wasn't getting on the bridge. You couldn't get on the bridge because I wouldn't lead you onto the bridge. Because in the world of ministry, in the world of preachers, I'm just being honest there's a sense, especially back, not so much today, but back then, there's this sense, the people are looking to me for leadership. If I stop leading, they're not going to make it. Is that the preacher's responsibility? So he took me to that and he said, what I want you to do is I want you to recognize the growth in people. I want you to recognize growth in yourself. And I want you to see that while in the beginning it required some law, trust that what the teaching did was produce spirit living. So it was a bridge. We're going to need, we're going to be a five-fold ministry until we come to a place where we're mature enough to grow one another. And we started on the bridge, and we started this journey. So on this side, everything was five-fold. The Rock of Central Florida, a five-fold ministry. That was our big thing. The Rock of Central Florida, a five-fold ministry. We started on this side. Holy Spirit began to deal with me. I began to talk to you, teach you. We went on this journey. We stepped onto this bridge. And while we started there, we stayed there until he got us to the other side. And we're still growing. But we got on that bridge. We're going to do this until we know what's next. Can I accept what God has for me next? This is part of the journey. Here we are in the fivefold, Ephesians 4, 11, 12, and 13. Here we are in the fivefold. Can I accept that it is possible that this was provision until... We came into a place where we begin to hear in a way that the Father could speak clearly to me. Listen, it's not a success because you need me to preach to you every week. I said this then and I'll say it again today. The real testimony is when I'm speaking, I want it to come to a place at a, some point when what you hear me say is confirmation to what you've already heard. Because instead of waiting for Steve Parker to bring a revelation to you, because you've been matured and you can hear and you can see, suddenly on that bridge I say something and you're like, oh, yeah, man, he's saying that to me. That happens all the time in that back room. Do you hear me today? So the bridge of until, he says, listen, I'm going to give you these things and I'm using the fivefold ministry, but how many other things are there? What has he given us that are meant only for a moment up until that until bridge? 
How many things are you laying hold of? How many things do we camp out in? Do this for your own, in your own world right now, wherever you're at. How many things are you laying hold of? You've done it forever, done it forever, done it forever, and it isn't a forever thing. And the Father says, step onto that bridge. Yeah. I gave that to you only until you recognized that you drew out of that everything you could. Now it's time to get on that bridge because on the other side of that bridge is what that was preparing you for. That wasn't your final destination. What I have prepared for you is on the other side, and you can't get to that until you cross the bridge. Do you hear me? And part of the problem, part of the problem with Ephesians 4.11, and listen, I have, I have friends that, being honest, that have argued with me about this particular scripture. They don't like this until, but part of the issue with accepting the next is that most people don't believe they can arrive at verse 13. Let me read verse 13 again. It says, do these things until you attain to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. That's enough said right there. Until. To say that I can't get past the five-fold ministry is to say that we cannot attain the uni unity of faith. Yeah. I don't believe that. Right. I'm not going to accept that. I'm going to believe with all of my heart that we can. Yeah. In fact, the reason we're gathered together this morning, the reason we're in this house together this morning is because we've achieved part of that. Yeah. We've crossed a bridge, and there is unity of faith in this room right now. There is a unity. There is a oneness of mind and spirit in this room right now. And to say that, mm, you know, we're there, but, you know, people tell us we can't really be there, is to say to you, stop here, and why do you, why do you even want to hear? It's vain. It's lost. It's wasted. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. This bridge of until is recognizing this is where he's got me today, and when that's fulfilled, I'm going to go over this bridge. I'm only here until. This is an until moment. These moments that some of you today, you're, even with jobs, job related. Let me move along, but I'm going to point this out. Some of it's job related. I'm doing this job. This is the job I'm doing and blah, 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 blah. And it's, you know, I love this job or I don't love this job or wherever it might be with work. Don't consider that your final destination. What you need to think about, is this just my until? Maybe this is only my until. Maybe he's using this to prepare me for what's coming next. Do you hear me this morning? What do you pay attention to? Genesis 26, 12. Go there with me, please. Genesis chapter 26, verse 12. I'm going to ask some of the guys, turn that air down a little bit, man. It's a hot oven in this room right now. Genesis 26, in the New King James Version. Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the man began to prosper and continued prospering until, everybody say until. Until. until he became very prosperous. Now, if you're not careful, you will look at this verse, and it will look like this is simply about becoming rich with money or wealthy with money. It's about way more than that. I'm going to read it again. Isaac sowed in that land. Now, Isaac did become wealthy. Isaac sowed in that land, and he reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him, and the man began to prosper and he continued, everybody say continued. continued. He continued prospering until he became very prosperous. Until he became very prosperous. He continued prospering until he became very prosperous. There's an interesting uh, the word here, the Hebrew. I don't, I'm not going to say it right, but I'm going to give you the word. It's Wagadel or something like that. It's Hebrew. I don't know. I'm not even pretending to know how to speak Hebrew. But this word is so incredible because this word wealthy, this word prosperous, this word rich means this. It means to become. It means to grow, to become great or important, to promote, to make powerful, praise, magnify, to be able to do great things. The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he was able to do great things things. Hear this with me again. The man began to prosper. He continued or began to grow and continued growing until he became very, until he began to do great things. So what stands out in this scripture to you the most? The sowing, the growing, or the prospering? Isaac sowed, then Isaac grew, and then Isaac became. 
The until bridge is about you and me recognizing that on one side of this bridge, there is something that I am doing that could be amazing and it could be great, but it isn't the finished thing. Isaac began prospering until he became very prosperous. Isaac began to take a journey, and on this side of the bridge, he could have said, I've reached a place where I have grown strong. I've reached a place where I've become a leader. I've become a father. I've become a husband. I've reached a place where the blessing is flowing. I've reached that place, and I could stand here. But he did not do that because the promise wasn't that he would be prosperous. The promise was that he would be very prosperous. So what Isaac did was he said, I am going to cross this. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. And I'm going to keep working hard. And I'm going to keep hearing the voice of the Lord. And I'm going to begin to cross this bridge. And I'm going to walk on this bridge until I get to the other side where I am very prosperous. Where the fullness of God has materialized and manifested in my life. I would say to you this this morning, wherever you are on whatever side of the bridge you are, using this as an analogy, no matter how well you might be doing, and I'm not just talking about finance, I'm talking about life. You're happy, you're joyful. One of the, I won't say who, but someone this morning in our meeting before we came out here was talking about how much joy they have. I would say this to them and to all of you no matter how much joy we have today, celebrate that. But don't for a second let yourself believe that this is as good as it gets. No, if he got me here, what is he going, what is he doing this in me for? Where does he want me to get to and begin to keep moving forward and step because this is only until I get to what is even better. I can tell you every day, you need to hear me, everything the father is doing in you today, none of it is finished. None of what he's doing in you today is finished. None of us in this room are finished. We're only finished if we stand on this side and we say, this is it. This is all she wrote. All the while, the father is saying, no, 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 no. How'd you get there? You got there by hearing. Keep hearing and you will grow until it's even better. The kingdom of God does not have a fulfillment in the sense of it's all said and done. As long as you are breathing air, you should be maturing and we should be growing and we should be changing and we should be seeing more and more of the blessing of God in our life. And again, I'm not talking about just money. I'm talking about your relationship with your husband, with your wife, with your employer, with your money, with your sons, with your daughters, with your family, with your neighbors, whatever you're doing, your dreams, your visions. Can I get past this place? If I will cross, if I will recognize that in front of me, there is a bridge called until. In this place that I'm at, and if I, if I get caught up in this, I won't even see the bridge. But if I can look at where I'm at and I can celebrate it and I can give thanks for it, but I can also step out and keep saying, Father, if you did this, you can do so much more. And I'm going to take this journey. I'm going to transition from what is good to what is even better. And then crossing the bridge of until it is a walk, it is not a run. Galatians 4 verses 1 and 2 read like this. says, I mean that the heir, as long as he is a child, is no different from a slave, though he is the owner of everything. But he is under guardians and managers until the date set by his father. I mean that the heir... As long as he is a child, is no different from a slave, though he is the owner of all of it. But he is under guardians and managers until the date set by his father. Let me tell you something. This isn't a word given just for you and me. We're not being asked to walk out anything or to understand anything different than Christ. Even Christ had to walk out this process. He was the owner of everything, yet became a slave to the man. Because he was sent to die for the sins of mankind, there was no alternative. He became a slave to man because when he came, there was, he couldn't just say, let me out. Or maybe he could have. But he said, not my will, but your will be done. 
And he came and he became a slave to man because he said, this is the only way I'm going to have to submit myself to 33 years of living as a man, even though I own it all. I'm going to submit myself to living as a man so that the glory of God can be manifested again in mankind and they can stop going into a temple that's producing nothing every day. They can stop sacrificing things that are producing nothing every day. I mean that the heir, as long as he is a child, is no different from a slave, though he is the owner of everything, but he is under guardians and uh, managers until the date set by his father. Christ was under guardians and managers until the day of his crucifixion, his resurrection. Luke 180 says this, we're going to come back to this. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness. How long? Until the day of his public appearance to Israel. The child grew and became strong in spirit. He was in the wilderness until the day of his public appearance to Israel. There is a danger of being afraid to pass from one place to the other. I'm telling you today, crossing the bridge of until, it is a walk, it is not a run. And in the same way, when Christ, he's the son of God, when he was sent into the earth, and it took 33 years for that purpose to be fulfilled, his bridge... On one side of it was recognizing, I am your son, and you are sending me to the earth. My bridge is the journey that I'm going to have to walk out so that people can see and know what I already see and know. But I'm going to have to walk it out. I've got to take them on a journey. I am going to see, and I am going to hear. In the same way, I can tell you that today, what the Father is asking of you and me is to be willing to step onto a bridge of until. I recognize where I'm at, and no matter how good it is, there's another side. No matter how bad it is, there's another side. No matter where you find yourself today, there is another side. The common denominator in all of this is that no one ever gets to the other side alone. Now on side A, you might need more people. But even when you get to side B, Even if you need less people, you still need one another. To cross your bridge of until, don't be afraid to wrap your arm around the shoulders of those who have gone before you because it isn't weakness, it's possibility, it's opportunity. When I think about the bridge of until and what it encompasses, I think about how for Kim, my wife, and me, for our children, where we are, where we've been, when I think about where we're headed, when I think about this house, when I think about you, and I think about what's on the other side, one of the things that I promise you will never become a dormant place in me is the willingness to step into the unknown, to step out on a bridge, no matter how good it is, I'm telling you, there is no amount of, I don't even know how to say it. There is no amount of, I don't like this word, but I'm going to use it, success. There is no amount of growth. There is no amount of fulfillment that is going to make me stop trusting the Father to get me to the next. If every single person in this house today stood up and said, I'm a believer, and we're going to change the earth, and I'm getting on that bridge, while in one sense it might be, yes, we're going to do this together, and in another sense it is, okay, well, when we cross this bridge, we're just going to come to another one, and we're going to keep crossing, because I'm always looking, what does this, what until does this moment possess He brought me here only until this can come because the Father has promises for you and me. This morning when we were in the room, and I want to do this, this morning when we were in the back room and we were preparing for service this morning, normally when I meet with the music team and the leaders in the house, I will go into the room, not every time, but often, and I will say, what are you hearing today? What do you see today? And they will share that with me. And then this morning, the door barely closed, and Tim Carney 
spoke. I never prompted anything, but he spoke. And then when he finished, another one spoke. Said, I don't want to say what they saw. You'll understand in a moment. Then another one spoke. And I just watched and witnessed because that was a tangible manifestation of what it is to cross a bridge of until. There was a day these people that I'm listening to wouldn't be able to say the things that they're saying until they could. Because they were faithful. And because they heard and because they witnessed and because they trusted. There was a day those words would have never come out of their mouth and I want to invite them this morning to speak that. I want you one at a time to stand and speak what you said this morning one at a time beginning with Tim. was, oh, sorry, <laughs> um, people don't think they can do something until they see someone else do it in many cases. And the example that I used was pole vaulting. And there was one way to pole vault, and there was a world record, until somebody did it backward. And if you look at this, this person beat the record because they did it totally differently. But once that happened, that became the new normal. And so what I saw that as is that I'm hope to you this morning. Mm -hmm. Wherever you're at, I'm standing up on top of the wall and I'm reaching my hand down and I'm saying, I'm up here. Yeah. And whatever that means to you, I'm letting you know that you are important yeah. to this house. Yeah. Everything you have in your mind, your spirit, the things you have for me and for others, have hope. Amen. It's going to happen if you continue to take the steps. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm standing on top of the wall as a testimony, yes, saying these things have happened for me. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the greatness and the rainbow, Kaylee, that you saw, yes. I'm buying that up. Yes. Amen. There are going to be miracles that happen, not because I'm asking Yahweh to move great on my behalf, but because I have done a lot of small, detailed things over years. And that's the hope I have for you, Amen. that I'm the sum of my choices, and so can you be. So I, I extend my hand to you as hope. Amen. There's so come the bridge. On Let's go. There's the bridge. Next. But Yahweh told me this week um, that, I that I was to play healing this morning. And so those who needed healing, that's what I imparted to you. Amen. Um, and it sounds cliche, but it's not. It's not. Amen. Because a lot of people talk about healing when they haven't been led to talk about it. When you're told to do that's it, good. when you're told to be it, that's when you act. Amen. Don't try to do it outside of, of not being told. So Amen. I impart that healing to you. It's great. Amen. Thank you, Alex. Amen. Yahweh told me to bring my expectation this morning, but he said not to bring it for him because he always does what he says he'd do. He told me to bring it for you. So I came this morning with expectation of you and what you bring. And I believe the bridge I saw or the rainbow I saw was the bridge of until. Amen. And I didn't realize Amen. that. Until Amen. Then. I agree. Thank you, Kaylee. Yahweh showed me that there are still people in this room and maybe even online that still can't believe that the presence of the Father can be anywhere else but in this room, that it can't be wherever you are. I'm here to tell you that because you're where you are with him inside you, that's where he is. And the presence is no less or more because it's him. How can it be less? Mm -hmm. So where you are, wherever, if you work or you play or you go to school, wherever you are, his presence there is a mighty presence, and he wants you to know that. Don't wait to get here on Sunday morning. You bring Amen. What, you, what you were walking in in that moment to this place and share it. Amen. Thank you, Tim. I was told to bring my character and my personality. And I was thinking, are you sure? <laughs> But I realized that your character is really who you are internally, and your personality is how others see you. And both of those are tools, and both of those things are things that you can use to your and to the kingdom's advantage. That's what I bring you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. I was told today to uh, come as a witness. Um, uh, Yahweh woke me up this morning with a dream, and uh, somebody was kind of like trying to get my attention during a service, and um, I was missing out what I was supposed to witness up here. 
So I bring my witness, and I hope you all bring your witness. Amen. As well. Amen. Thank you, Vanessa. Um, I was told to bring my ear. So this week, while I was driving home, I work in Kissimmee and live in Longwoods, Long Drive. Um, but on I-4, um, we were cruising along right around 7 o'clock, and then everything stopped. Um, there was a major crash, blocked all four lanes, but everything stopped, including my stereo in my car. Everything just went completely quiet. And so I said, all right, Holy Spirit, what's happening? And he said, listen. And in that, that's what I felt I was to bring, to listen, Amen. to actively listen, not just... Love that. Listen, like you're listening, but to focus in on what is being spoken and listen. And then I also heard, after we were done, to not be afraid of the silence. Amen. Amen. Good, good. Thank you. Yahweh told me to trust the process, and I'm here to declare his faithfulness. Yes. Amen. Uh, this morning, I saw... Uh, that flow, like a flow, is clear communication plus movement. And if you're moving without the voice of Yahweh, you're committing to chaos and frustration. And also that Holy Spirit and Yahweh is never a distraction. It's never a distraction. Right. Even right. when you're flowing and, you, and it look, feels good, if Yahweh and Holy Spirit tell you to do something else, it's the right thing to do. So. Amen. Thank you. Several weeks ago, um, Holy Spirit told me that Yahweh had created me to be a pillar for him. So I've been asking him, just what kind of pillar do you want me to stand as for you? And in uh, this time, he told me that I'm a pillar of blessing. And in that, what I see is even in my life, I feel like it couldn't get better. And I felt like that before, and it does get better. And my family is blessed, and my wife, and we have a daughter, and everything's great, but I know that there is another bridge of until, and there's going to be even more blessing. Amen. So I stand to just show that to anyone who will witness. Amen. Good word. Thank you, Sam. Uh, Yahweh showed me that, <clears throat> that you. He showed me that you were coming hungry for something different today, that it wasn't going to be the familiar, that it was going to be something new, that it was going to be something different, and that it would make a draw on me in a different way than it was the week before or the week before that. Um, so I saw maturity, and I knew that something Amen. <laughs> would happen. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, so last night I had a dream of uh, Alex Darnell singing his song, I Will Declare. And in the song it talks about, I will declare with my mouth what you have done. And today, when we were in the back office, or let me back up, in, after I woke up, I had the scripture in my head of, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And when we were in the back office, just listening to, you know, our team bring what they had, that is really the abundance of all of our Amen. hearts, and that we have to pour out to everyone today. That's great. That's Thank you, Mahala. Uh, for me, uh, it's been a place of joy and, and, and thankfulness, you know, um, is what I've been experiencing. And I, and I can't, I can't even explain how overwhelming the joy and, 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 and the thankfulness have been in my life. You know, I was telling him that sometimes I'm just sitting by myself. And I'm smiling, you know, <laughs> and to the point where my face is hurting. I'm smiling so much. And I, I just, and I, and I know that it's a place where it goes beyond my own understanding. Mm -hmm. It's a peace. It's a joy that's there. And, and I'm just thankful for that. Yeah. And yeah. so as much as I can, I want to share that joy. I want to share this thankfulness with you, you know, to let you know that it's not just for me. I learned today that it's not just for me, right? you know, but it's for all those who are in my presence who would dare to step mm -hmm. in yeah. and to enjoy Amen. with me. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Archie. Amen. Um, okay, so basically what I shared this morning was uh, at the start of the week, 
I wasn't doing too good. I tend to be always really depressed uh, during the holiday season. Um, uh, when I was a young child, our, that was a stressful life for my mother and father. And it was just real stressful. So it carried on into my adult life. Um, I've fought it all my life. Um, and around Tuesday or Wednesday this week, uh, Yahweh started dealing with me and making me realize that I, I should be rejoicing, mm. not being yeah. depressed. Mm -hmm. So my word was uh, to change my attitude, to rejoice, be happy for the blessings I have, Amen. be happy for the family I have. Yes. And uh, that's my word. Amen. Thank you, JB. So uh, I guess Steve shared a little bit of my story this morning. But so I went out doing yard work yesterday, and there was this bush. And I, I kid you not, should be able to tell it. It would have covered the whole little platform here that the drums are on. It was huge. So I just shaped it up, right? And the neighbor come out, and he said, hey, man, you know there's a light pole actually underneath that. That just growed around the light pole. I was like, cool, well, I shaped it up. It looks good. <laughs> so, but then Shaviv come out, and she said, hey, uh, let's get rid of that thing. So then I had to make a choice whether I was going to start, and I started, right? And I was like, oh, man, I shouldn't have started this because it was like it was just wasn't a bush that a few limbs had grown out. I mean, it was thick. Like, it, there wasn't empty space in there. It was completely mm -hmm. thick. You couldn't see the pole looking in it. That's how thick it was. But we just, I just started, you know what I mean? So I brought my willingness to attack that thing that will overwhelm you. Amen. You know? Amen. Thank you, James. Good morning. So after everybody was done talking, I was like, I know I have something, but now I know why I was waiting till the end. And mine was four words. It's not too late. And so I bring that to you that I'm a demonstration that it's not too late. Whether you, Whatever you've done for two days or it's been four years since you prayed or it's been two days since you talked to your mama or you've been late every day at your job, it's not too late. Amen. It's not too late. Amen. 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 Thank you, dear. So all of these things represent an until moment. They were, I'll use what Shaviv said, she was late until she wasn't. JB was depressed until he wasn't. Each one, James looking at those trees, looked at that thing, it was overwhelming until it wasn't. Archie, happy, joyful, that moment, that's the moment he's in until he's more than that. So whether we're in, and I could go through each one, but whether, no matter where we're at, if we can understand the bridge of until, this is what I want you to lay hold of today. It is a bridge taking you from wherever you are. It could be a great place, could be a place of challenge, but that bridge is available to every single person in here so that wherever you are, you are only there until you are not. You are only there until you're at the next place, until you're at the better place, until you're at the promised place. Can you hear me this morning? There is a bridge of until for every single person in here, and I can tell you what you have not done. I don't know what you have done, but I can tell you what you have not done. You have not finished the journey. Remember, it's a walk, not a run. You have not finished crossing your bridge to the next thing that the Father has for you. Can you accept what comes next? Can you accept what comes next? No matter where you're at, can you cross this bridge of until? I am this until that. And I am moving across this bridge to that. I am trusting the Father. I'm putting my arms around the shoulders of whoever might be around me. If I need joy, I'm going to get beside the guy that's got joy. If I need hope, I'm going to get beside the guy that's going through a difficult situation. Whatever I need, I'm going to get. If I can't be firm, I'm going to get beside the guy that's firm in a pillar. And I'm going to put my arms on them. And I'm going to cross this bridge. And I'm going to get there until I'm going to do whatever it takes until he gets me to the place he wants me to be. Would everyone stand in this room, please, today? Now, I do understand and I do realize and I do know that for some, it's more difficult than others. For some of us, we look at where we're at and it seems nearly, as James was pointing out, again, I go back to that tree and it looks absolutely nearly impossible. But I can tell you, just like my labs, they're actually my wife's labs, but <laughs> let me clarify. But just like our labs, they were born to swim. 
one of them did it because he wanted to. One of them only did it because she was, she had to. Didn't matter. She, she just, it was law. We're all in different places. Some of us are going to cross this bridge because right now you can't wait to walk out of this room and already begin to trust Holy Spirit to make some adjustments on you. Some of you perhaps came in and you weren't smiling. You're determined today. I'm going to smile. Some of you today, whatever you came in, you're going to recognize what Jacob said. And you're going to recognize there's character in you that no one's ever seen. There's personality in you that's never been expressed. And you've held it back because you're afraid of what this one might say or that one might say or how it might be perceived. And Holy Spirit said, let it out, baby. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. I am this until I am that. And I'm going to be this that might be great, anointed and powerful, but I'm only going to be this until I am better and more anointed and more worthy and more whatever. And I'm going to, I'm moving. I'm on a journey. I'm on a journey and it is a walk. It is not a run. You're not going to walk out of here and all of a sudden you're on the other side of the bridge. You got to be willing first to get on it. The bridge of until I'm crossing this thing and I am this until I'm that, but I'm going to cross this thing and everything underneath that bridge, as I said last week. All the water, the stream, the gully, the, the, the cavern, the, 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 the whatever you want to call it that's underneath of that, the, the, the ravines that's underneath that bridge, all of that stuff that's underneath that, all that is there for is to intimidate you, simply to intimidate you. Wow, that water is moving fast. If I fall in that, I'll never survive. Wow, that ravine is deep. If I fall in that, I'll never survive. All that is from this place where you're at to the place where he wants to take you, it's simply there to intimidate you. The enemy knows it. But I think the great thing about it is that the Father provided the bridge of until. And if you will keep your eyes focused in front of you, this is what I promised you. No matter where you're at, you're only there until you get here. This is my promise. Keep moving towards my promise. And I promise you this. He will be faithful every day, every day, every day. Can you agree with that this morning? Put your hands together. Father, I am so incredibly thankful for every single person that is in this room. I'm thankful for every person watching online and listening today. I'm thankful for your anointing. I'm thankful for the word. My prayer and my hope is that as Stephanie said, that there's a seeing and a hearing today unlike any seeing and hearing we've done, that we are witnessing today, that many of us, we're witnessing today, all of us are witnessing from a very different perspective today. And dreams are alive. Hopes are alive. Confidence is alive. Before us is an opportunity to take a journey, to go into a deeper place with you. Help us today, everyone, to trust you to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.